you turn out your pockets in annoyance and frustration, looking for something that could help remedy the situation. The pocket watch covered in roses, the whip, the gun, the key you got out of that thing's legs, the lip-shaped uh, toy, and the fake roses. The pocket watch. You've had this whole time, of course. It's long since stopped, so it's not like you can use it to tell time. If you were ever to tell someone about it, you might be inclined to tell them the watch stopped the moment she died. It's a lie, though. You went on working for months after that. You try to fix it every day. Some days, you still do. The hallway you're in is pretty barren. There are three doors on the right, and a big door at the end of the hall. As for the wheelchair, it seems perfectly normal. Nothing on it. Funny, you've never used a wheelchair, or known anyone who had to be in one for any length of time. Well, no use standing around. You push your way into the nearest doorway that opens. It appears to be an operating theater. There's one of those nurse things strapped to a gurney beneath some lights. It's not making a noise, and you can't tell whether it might be alive, or dead, or somewhere in between. You hate those things, their weird latexy flesh pulled tight over their two voluptuous bodies. They're sickening just to look at. Were they human once? Did they do this to themselves? For the love of all that's holy, shoot first to ask questions later. You are not going anywhere near that bitch. You unload your gun into the limp figure. As you do, it twitches and moans. For a moment. Then it's still again. You get up close and personal with the thing, keeping your gun out, just in case. Yeah, she's all fucked up. Looks like she was dead before you shot her. Probably. Might have been strangled. Jesus, you hate dealing with this crap. Wait, is that something in its mouth? Ah, why do there have to be so many bodies around here? You'd like to be respectful. Unfortunately, there's not really anything left of her eyes to close. Ugh, you hate seeing this thing like this. It reminds you of her lying there, still, lifeless. You shudder and turn the thought away, pressing your fingers into its hanging mouth to retrieve whatever it is that's in there. Oh look, it's a key ring with a heart and a key. Wonderful. You slip the key in your pocket and look around at the rest of the room. There's not much to see, except you suddenly realize hiding in the gloom of the operating room, behind a plane of glass, is a viewing theater. And somewhere is there watching you. And just as quickly, she's gone. Did you imagine it? You put your hand out to the glass, and it passes right through. Just about as you expected. However, on the other side, you notice it feels very... cold. You push your way past the threshold into the cold operating theater. Beyond the sea of red seats, you see an old, strange door. The presence, or shadow, or whatever it was, seems to be gone. For now. You take a peek at the seat that that shadow was in, looking for clues, or maybe popcorn. Hm. No popcorn. Wait. Why would someone leave an old VHS tape here? You haven't seen one of these in years. You pick it up and check to see if there's a label on it. Oh, there's a label on it, all right. One you haven't seen in years. Date night? How can this be here? Oh, no, 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 no. You absolutely refuse to think about what's on that tape. You don't need to remember it. The doctors told you it wasn't your fault what happened. It was a hemorrhage. could have happened to anyone. Then it kept happening. Every time you saw her again, even though she looked different, you knew it was her. Every time it happened again, you didn't need to look at the tape. Alright, this pace has been fucking with you this entire time. You are damned if you're going to let it start getting to you now. After a minute to regain your composure, you put the tape with your other shit and march up to the door. Who the blazes thought it was appropriate for a hospital? That'd be codes against this sort of thing. Ah, oh, well, this town has thrown so much ridiculous bullshit at you, you're not sure if this lady's gonna get down off the door and try to eat you when you open the lock. But, whatever. If that happens, you'll deal with it. You're still alive so far. And, of course, the damn thing moans when you unlock it. Gross. 
The door opens on a large, mostly empty room. That must be the maternity ward. At the back, you see a row of doors. Closer, and illuminated in eerie pink light, is a baby's bassinet. You look in the bassinet, weapon at the ready. Ugh! David Lunch called, and he wants his baby back. The nasty thing rides like a slug in the crib, mewling its toothy, gaping maw like a wound from its face to stomach, tongue pulsing and sliding against its teeth. The squirming thing is practically begging to be filled with hot lead to shut it up, but you think better of it for now, especially with all these doors behind you. Who knows what might come out? You go down the line and shake hands with all the doors in the maternity ward. Most of them are broken beyond repair, but two of them you can feel budge under your hand. You think you could get them open. Behind one, you can't hear anything. Behind the other, you hear a soft, whimpering sound. Okay, you'll take door number one, Bob. You push the door in the quiet room open and blink repeatedly at the room, bathed in a pulsating red light. It looks like a fairly typical examination room, aside, of course, from the stocks attached to the gurney and the chains hanging from the ceiling. You're not sure whether gruesome-looking instruments on the metal table are usual for childbirth or not. But there's the usual medical posters. At least you think they're usual. You haven't looked too hard yet. There's a couple of cabinets and drawers that might have something interesting or useful. You look closely at the posters... Okay, maybe they aren't normal after all. That's just gross. You ignore the gruesome images and instead raid the room for anything useful you can find in the drawers and cabinets. After a minute or two of rummaging, you arrange what you found on the counter. A baby bottle full of milk? Probably. A box of bullets? You've been finding lots of those. A box of painkillers? And some medical documents. You stash away your stuff, and then look at the documents. They're mostly intake forms and doctor's notes on various patients. One that catches your eye is for some 16-year-old girl who had a miscarriage and a suspected incest case. Poor chick. You shuffle through the form some more until... Uh, oh, no, no, no. It's an intake form for a girl who's been dropped off for respiratory failure. Signs of strangulation? Naked? They were getting the police involved. Your mind reels again. How could this be here? And now it's time to leave. You take your shit and head back out into the echoing hall of the maternity ward. There's still the other door with the low noises behind it. And of course there's that baby... thing. Well, how long have you been here? You know a puzzle when you see it. You creep back into the thankfully still empty maternity hall and over the crib with a slug-like infant still squirming and gasping. You offer it the bottle, its horrible, gummy mouth crozes around it, sucking and drinking. After it drains about half the bottle, the nasty thing starts to shake and spasm, coughing wetly. It coughs and it shakes and it coughs. It coughs up a key ring and then stops moving. It looks like a car key and a house key. Somebody shit out of luck without these. Well, no sense in putting it off any longer. You pocket the keys and approach the other door. Sounds quiet now, but you have your gun out, ready for anything as you push the door open. Beyond the threshold is what seems like a gruesome medical torture chamber. There are hooks hanging from the ceiling, and a lacerated body hanging against the back wall. At least, you hope it's just a body. There's something familiar about this one. 